<laughs> Danielle Smith wants to double the population of Alberta. And the interviewer, Sean, goes, you want to double the population of Alberta? It's like, that's five and a half million people. Like, that's like 10 million people. And she said, yep, <laughs> I'll show you that. And 64 million people, or excuse me, $64 million made by Bell on prison phone calls. So in prison, you have to buy calling cards, I guess. And Bell makes a crap ton of money on that. And I would imagine it's not ideal rates. So what they used to make on long distance, now they're making from prisoners. Hmm. There's lots to get to. Let's get to it. The government of Ontario gets a kickback. Of the 64 million, the government of Ontario gets something like 38 million. So 40 or 50, 55%. Bell takes 45%. <laughs> Sounds like a racket to me, doesn't it? Hmm. Hmm. Anyway, there's lots to get to. Let's get to it. Did I say that already? Illuminati Bot is, and I love, I love uh, robot dogs. I love robot dogs with things on their head already. And I just imagine that robot dogs with things on their head will also get a gun. Can you imagine a government so authoritarian that they can just allow a dog to go around with a speaker on its head? And that's enough. It doesn't need the gun. It's got the speaker. Because if you don't listen to the speaker, they'll unperson you and you'll starve. <laughs> Here is the dog walking around with some announcement. I don't know what the announcement says, but it is post-apocalyptic. This seems like I am legend, but the dog is a robot dog that works for the government. Terminator, it seems like Terminator, right? All of these movies coming to reality. Have you seen Optimus? Like Optimus looks like the iRobot robot. Here's this thing. It sounds so natural with the servos going. <laughs> it's probably saying, you know, shuffleboard on the poo poo deck or whatever it's called. Oh, I never watched Love Boat. I never liked Love Boat. Um, but it doesn't. It doesn't sound like. It doesn't sound happy. It sounds. It sounds apocalyptic and authoritarian, and that's not great. And is it coming here? Yeah, but it, it seems like that's what they're wanting. It seems like that's what they're trying for. Max Lugrave, we have to start in the United Kingdom. We have to start in the UK, and then we'll get into the Canadian news. But what's happening in the United Kingdom is absolutely crazy. And I sent out the newsletter yesterday for Canada Poly subscribers, and on it I was talking about how I don't think that the underpinnings of the law exist for Canada to go as authoritarian as the UK is. I don't think they exist. I think the Canada wants to do that. And I think they're going to ad hoc try and say that the laws exist, but they're going to run up against pushback. They've already run up against pushback with their online harms, people being worried that their online posts are going to be scrutinized or silenced or somehow uh, whatever. The freedom of expression is going to be undermined. And so the people who are trying to put the online harms bill in have had to contend with that in a way that they didn't have to in England, and I'll explain during this series. And so there's there's already differences. That's not to say that they're not going to try. That's not to say that there's not a danger. I mean, we've got um, a bunch of, well, we've got one update on the Coots guys who are still in jail. So they are going to use the law and interpret it in a way that makes them able to put whoever they want in jail. But I'm just saying this specific, what's going on in England, they're going to have to get something that rhymes. They can't do this here yet, as far as I understand it anyway. So here, here we go. Max is talking about this. He says, this is a plot line in V for Vendetta. <laughs> we live in V for Vendetta? Yikes. I mean, like, it was an exciting movie, but I like turning it off and going home to my safe, normal world, right? Gov.uk says, think before you post, right? And Crown Prosecution Service is who they're, who, who they're uh, retweeting or quote tweeting. And Crown Prosecution says, think before you post content that incites violence or hatred isn't just harmful, it can be illegal. The CPS takes online violence seriously and will prosecute when the legal test is met. Remind those close to you to share responsibility or face the consequences. Nobody's going to post anything online in the United Kingdom if this stands. And just in case you were worried that the UK.gov didn't actually post that and somebody just photoshopped it, well, here's the real post, gov.uk with a gray check mark right there, if you're interested, right? And the Crown Prosecution Service with their blue or with their gray check mark as well. And uh, Matthew says that the United Kingdom is over. Yeah. Yep. Yep. That's a little bit concerning. Carl 
is highlighting this gentleman here from from Cleveland Police. And Carl says, this is Sargon of Akkad, by the way, more than two years in jail for shouting at the police. This is insanely harsh. Two-tier Kears, Britain is a full-on police state if you're not a minority. Cleveland Police say Stephen Malin is the first person to be sentenced in Teesside for his involvement in the violent disorder in Hartlepool, Hartlepool on Wednesday, the 31st of July. Judge Laird jailed him for 26 months. The 53-year-old was constantly in the faces of officers gesticulating and shouting at them. And so wild. Like this happened a week and a bit ago. The 31st of July was nine days ago, 10 days ago. What? How does that, how does that happen? David says, Hugh Edwards, a former BBC presenter caught with child abuse images of the most serious category on his phone, has been given a sentencing date of September. Anti-immigration protesters arrested, charged, convicted, and sent to jail in one week. Do you understand? So that's that's where the priorities lie for the United Kingdom, right? And so Colin is highlighting this. UK authorities are now arresting citizens for social media po posts that contain inaccurate information. Holy cow, a woman has been arrested in relation to inaccurate information on social media. A 55-year-old woman was arrested, arrested today on suspicion of publishing written material to stir up racial hatred and false communications. She is currently being held in police custody. That's Sky News. And here, um, Ian sheds some context or sheds some light on this whole thing. He says, what did this woman post? First, some context about the backwards law in England. The United K Kingdom Public Order Act of 1986 prohibits expression of racial hatred, which includes using threatening, abusive, or insulting words or behavior intended to stir up racial hatred. The law applies to video, audio, and written posts and carries huge penalties. What are they? Up to seven years in prison. And law says unlimited fines. Back to Bonnie Spoffer's, Spoffer's arrest. She falsely claimed that the suspect, Alex Mungwunga R, was a, suspect, or was a Muslim asylum seeker who had arrived in the UK by boat. Allegedly, in reality, he is a 17-year-old from Lancashire, not an asylum seeker. That's why she's going to prison. We must fight to make sure laws like this never exist in America, right? So they're doing this based on 19, laws passed in 1986 where people didn't have the reach that they've got now. And I mean, it's in, it's, it's pretty wild that they're applying this to your everyday, everyday random post on Facebook or Twitter, et cetera, et cetera. And the police are enthusiastically going along with this. A Muse says... You can be arrested in the UK if you retweet this. Please don't retweet it. So. There's some Welsh flags there. So um, I, I, I am absolutely floored, honestly. Yesterday I showed you this footage of a person saying we should slit their throats, the people who are protesting against anti-immigration and now he's been arrested and i also found out i didn't know yesterday i thought he was just some random guy and i thought well that's really you know that's quite the thing to say in public right calling for slitting people's throats is really a step over the line right and but we find out that he's a counselor for labor. Labor counselor Ricky Jones has been arrested on suspicion of encouraging murder after footage emerged on social media of him calling for far right protesters to protesters' throats to be cut. So let's let's kill those far right protesters. Holy smoke, right? And so Ollie London is also reporting this. He says, and I mean, take everything with a grain of salt, right? Take everything with a grain of salt. But he says, the, this is labor counselor Ricky Jones. He called for thousands of anti-racism activists to kill anyone considered far right. We need to cut all their throats and get rid of them. He has been suspended from the labor party. He has not, uh, he has not been arrested. Now he's been arrested. So um, that's, that's interesting. Interesting things are evolving. This is interesting as well for the British police to post. Radio Genoa is sharing this. British police greet their fellow fellow citizens in Arabic. They appear to be completely compromised at this point. So here is the British police on their video. Here we go. This, this is not a joke or anything like that. This is real. Salam alaikum. 
Good morning, everyone, and thank you to the leaders and elders that have afforded me this opportunity to speak to you personally. The reason I'm speaking is to underline my commitment on behalf of the organisation to protect all the communities across the West Midlands. And in particular, I want to underline that message to your good selves and your congregations. And that's very, very acute to me, having seen some of the scenes that have played out elsewhere within the United Kingdom. I know because we have policed events over a long period of time that it's a regular occurrence across the West Midlands. However, what we've seen elsewhere has definitely caused concern in communities. And especially, I've listened to our guests at our open day this last weekend to representatives of your communities who have expressed their concern about what's happening nationally. So it's interesting because if certain people who you have to greet in Arabic are concerned, the police listen. And if people who are regular Brits who express themselves maybe a little bit more colorfully, if you express your concerns, you'll get greeted by five officers in a sawzall, right? They'll saw down your door and arrest you. So weird. What do you think the difference is, right? I mean, <laughs> there is a difference, right? Can you spot it? Here is a former police officer, um, utter desperation from UK police, head of the Met Police, Sir Mark Rowley warns even people abroad will be arrested for mean posts. Do you think? Do you, I don't think so. Here you go. But maybe crazier things have happened. So we'll throw the full force of the law as offenders, whether that's charging people with assaults, violent disorder, riot, and uh, if terrorism offences are appropriate, I know the uh, Director of Public Prosecutions has said he's prepared to consider that. We will throw the false force of the law at people. And whether you're in this country committing crimes on the streets or committing crimes from further afield online, we will come after you. Talk to me about that, because we have seen some high-profile figures whipping up the hatred. You talked about it in there with the officers, in fact, about this being added to by online commentary. I mean, I'm even thinking of the likes of Elon Musk getting involved. What are you considering when it comes to dealing with people who are whipping up this kind of behaviour from behind a keyboard, maybe in a different country? Being a keyboard warrior does not make you safe from the law. You can be guilty of offences of, of incitement, of stirring up racial hatred. There are numerous terrorist offences regarding um, uh, uh, the sort of publishing of material. All of those offences are in play if people are provoking hatred and violence on the streets. And we'll come after those individuals just as we will physically confront on the streets the thugs and the obs who are, taking, who are causing the problems for communities. It's interesting because that involves interpretation of a tweet and interpreting what it means and what it's intended for. And sometimes people are joking. Sometimes people are taking the piss. And sometimes they're talking about something legitimate. Like sometimes, I mean, Mr. Bernier's position on immigration is something that these people would say is inciting hatred, right? So he could be arrested for that. So you're getting into arresting your political opponents for their political opinions and, and dressing it up as protecting the community from hate speech, right? And that's wrong. I mean, wrong is not the right, like that's understating it by a lot, right? But it, how, do you, how do you confront that realistically? Right? That's very, very difficult. Radio Genoa is highlighting this. Muslim immigrants with clubs hunt down, hunt down white British families in Sheffield. This is happening yesterday. And I thought to myself, is this new footage? Is this just footage mixed in? So again, take it with a grain of salt. It's always, you have to take it with a grain of salt. It seems like this is an ongoing thing. This is happening up to yesterday. And, and I would expect this to happen today. It's only eight o'clock in the morning when I'm recording this right now. So I would, I would expect this to continue. I mean, in England, it's, you know, um, four hours hence, five hours hence. So Right, we're, we're approaching midday there. So I don't know, I haven't seen any videos of today's stuff, um, but this was from yesterday and it seems like it, up until yesterday, this stuff was still going on. So here we go. There's no peace in the Everyone is surprisingly calm. There are people like recording and stuff, like walking down the street with their bike, doing things, living, living life, you know. Uh, it seems like they don't understand the danger. They don't understand that 
the, those guys know they're in a war. Those guys understand what's going on. So the native Brits don't. And the police are on the side of the mob of armed thugs there. So that's scary. Ian Miles Chong says the UK police website is now IP blocking anyone who's not in the United Kingdom. Here's what it looks like from the EU. Sorry, you've been blocked, unable to access soh.police.uk. So the police websites are not accessible unless you're in the UK because people were doing direct messaging on their websites and reporting crimes that weren't happening and just wasting time. So um, while the police probably deserved to have their time wasted because they're focusing on on mean tweets rather than actual crimes, the police were not happy about that and their IT to professionals, I mean, took basic basic actions to protect their network, which makes sense. Like, I mean, honestly. So I, I don't think that they have a justification for what they're doing though. But I mean, they do in the law. And so what's going on can only be fixed by the people of the United Kingdom, unfortunately. Caroline says, don't tell me there are no two-tier police. There's no two-tier police policing. A year under investigation, two arrests, entire shifts in custody. My device is held for 17 months. A civil order brought to keep me off the internet. Hours of police time case building over tweets and CPS ruled no evidence and binned it. So yeah, pretty crazy. Uh, Tory counselor arrested for hate crime has his case dropped. Uh, Councillor Anthony Stevens understands he was reported to police by Labour Party member for tweets supporting Christian free speech. So it's used for political purposes to undermine their political opponents. And that's what's going on here. M Sexton is highlighting people writing a letter wanting the king to step in. He says, the king has powers using the royal prerogative when certain conditions apply. We believe many of those conditions have been met. His duty is to us and to act by invoking the obligations bestowed upon him when he swore the coronation oath. My eight-page letter explains it all. Thousands of letters were sent in November, now amended to show the current go current government and political failures. The people must have the ultimate power. They pol or, Yeah, the people have the ultimate power. They police and govern by our consent. The king must honor his oath, his majesty, the king, clearance house, blah, 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 blah. So he's got the letter here and I'm not gonna read the letter, but it's just interesting to me that people are saying, this government that we just elected is betraying us and we want you to step in and help us. It's interesting. It's very interesting, right? Carl Benjamin says, Britain is not a free country. The law is not on your side. The government is set against you. The police view you as a nuisance at best and an enemy at worst. The media will collectively lie about you without hesitation. You have no political representation. This is reality. And yeah, I think he's not wrong, unfortunately. And that's again, Sargon of Cod. So, um, what to do about that is now the question, right? Steve Jackson says, we are many, you are few, we are Brighton, who are you? So this is a chant, right? Except that these guys are, I don't know, I guess there's one group against another group, but this is the group of uh, anti-racist fascist people, the anti-fascist people, Antifa. And so like, it's crazy how this whole thing has infected the world. It's wild. It's absolutely wild. So they're they're protesting to make the refugees and other people who are completely changing the country of every country that they're doing this to make sure they feel welcome. Wild. Absolutely incredible. Sid says the reality is that Europe was totally destroyed during World War One and World War Two. It did not survive. It was taken over by a managerial elite of banking interests after the Allied victory. And that elite has been less impressive every generation. And BRICS is, is announcing the United Kingdom may now arrest citizens for retweets deemed hateful. That was from August 7th. So we knew about that. But I think that it's interesting World War One and World War II were engineered specifically to destroy Germany. And now we're doing this whole Caligari plan to undermine and destroy the last thing that would stand in the way of a, of a new world order, global governance type deal. And that's the United States. Russia is the other part. But if you have the United States on board, then you can go to war with Russia and reasonably overwhelm them probably, right? But at this point in time, if you show your cards then the United States and Russia have a common enemy and then you lose. So this whole splitting up the United States and Russia and trying to undermine the capitalism 
and success of the United States based on based on their freedom, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, is all to implement the next stage of their plan. And so they did World War I and World War II to do the same thing to Germany, and it worked a treat, right? And and now they're taking over Europe. They've taken over Europe. Europe doesn't really exist the way it did back then. And they want to move on to the United States, and that's what we're witnessing, the United States and, by extension, Canada and the other, other Five Eyes countries. So it's it's incredible. It's incredible what we're watching. The Globe and Mail is reporting as well. This is the last British story, and then we'll move on. Elon Musk is accused of aggravating tensions in Britain, sparking calls for a faster rollout of online safety harms. This is the Globe and Mail. So I wanted to look at their reasoning, but it's a paywalled article, and I don't pay money to the Globe and Mail. I could. I used to pay money to the Globe and Mail, and I used to include it in the show and talk about it because I like to talk about their reasoning and stuff. I, I can't pay money to the Globe and Mail. I don't want to give them money because they're naked propaganda and the government pays them more money than I ever could. They're not going to serve my interests because they've got a bigger customer, the government, and they're going to serve the government's interests. So I don't want access to the New York Times or the, to the um, Globe and Mail, but this is the kind of garbage that they're trying to hawk as a product, right? Like this is this is what they're selling. And hmm, I don't need an ideological, I don't, I don't need that um, on my plate in the morning. <laughs> Right? Like this whole idea of online safety laws being needed because Elon Musk is aggravating tensions in Britain because Keir Starmer's crazy town. <laughs> right? Like, I don't think so. I don't think so. They're they're missing a lot of context in order to mislead you. And that's on purpose. And I don't need to give people like that money. Let's move on. Grab bag of governance. Woohoo. Canada. And Paul says, Canada is aware of reports, but can't offer further comment due to privacy. Global Affairs Canada tells CTV News, it is aware of reports of a Canadian being detained in Switzerland following media reports Thursday that a former Canadian UN official is being held over espionage suspicions. Due to privacy considerations, no further information can be disclosed, the GAC person said. So there you go. It, I'm not surprised. And I have no idea, like, even who like who this person is or the context or anything like that who appointed them but there are so much criminality and it seems so much they get away with so much brazen stuff in Canada that I'm not surprised that it's being exported through um, ambassadors and placements and things like that through through other countries because upper echelon people in our country are not working for us right there's at least 11 MPs who have Chinese, bosses because they funded the campaign. They work for them, not us, right? We didn't fund the campaign. They just happened to be here governing for them, the people who funded the campaign, right? Unbelievable stuff. The liberals are in campaign mode. How do I know? This is Justin Trudeau's tweet from yesterday, 4.17 p.m. He says, liberals are proudly pro-choice and always will be. And I firmly, like, I'm really stuck, stuck. I refuse to believe that the baby is a null part of this whole thing. The liberals contend that the baby, it doesn't even come into the equation. But it's a really weird thing when killing babies is your flex for getting reelected. It's weird. It's weird. It's a weird flex. Andrew Coyne says, you know what we need? More gatekeepers. <laughs> what? My latest. What we need are more and better gatekeepers. How to bring competition to big tech and fix the social media mess. I've Again, I wanted to read, this is a Global Mail article as well, and I wanted to read the reasoning, but then it was paywalled and I was like, I don't care that much. More gatekeepers is bad. If people are gatekeeping, you don't want to go on that platform, right? There's um, places that I used to frequent and they used to be freedom-minded. And when the conversation turns, the mods get banhammery and I stop going there because they're not interested in actually talking about anything interesting, right? They'll ban you if you talk about anything interesting. And that's not, a, that's not really a free place to talk about things. And so it's very, very interesting how that works. Gatekeepers don't make a good place. You leave places like that, right? And because the gatekeepers invariably, their interests run up against your interests. The interest of advertisers run up against the interest of the consumer to be well-informed that, hey, maybe that product doesn't actually work, right? Like, so it's, it's very, very interesting how all of that's playing out. Nikki Ashton, who's an NDP MP, I believe. She says, North Northern Millennial Feminist. Hold on, I'm going to check out 
I was right. It's usually in their in their profile. So anyway, regardless, she says the liberals want to cut funding for residential school unmarked grave searches from three million to five hundred thousand. That's an eighty four percent percent cut. Does the liberal government care about the commitment made it made to victims' families? And it's interesting how she's trying to get. Well, she's saying um, sign this change dot org petition. It's interesting that she's trying to get all these people to sign this petition based on this faulty report of residential school unmarked graves. No unmarked graves have been found. None, not one. And yet she's trying to fundraise on this. When do they cancel Truth and Reconciliation Day? Because it's false. It is based on falsehoods, right? And But Nikki Ashton wants to use those falsehoods to fundraise, which is not good. It's bad. Kevin is responding to this. Remember yesterday when I told you that there were two very armed and very dangerous men on the loose in Alberta and to uh, they, they said shelter in place and then they said the shelter in place is lifted, but uh, we haven't found anybody yet. That's this one. And Kevin is responding to this one. So RCMP says we have a significant number of resources throughout the province focused on apprehending these subjects and on protecting the public. We have searched the area of this incident thoroughly and we do not believe the suspects are in the area. And Kevin says my fabrication shop and offices are one minute from this incident. 20 something employees in the only industrial shop in the area. Not one resource came and talked to us. Not one. Not one. So they're lazy liars who put people at risk with their lies. Well, yeah, I mean, we saw that with COVID, didn't we? Leo is um, responding to this. BC arsonist arrest, arrested after starting a forest fire. And he says, another climate change activist caught BC arsonist arrested after starting a forest fire. Yeah. Forest fires, wildfires, they are a thing for sure. Absolutely, they happen. Um, but a lot of the fires that are happening right now in Canada, they're man-made and man-started and all being used to justify further climate change restrictions carbon taxes and other mitigation strategies that are doomed to fail. I, I wonder if any of the 338 MPs could succinctly explain to me what's been done with the carbon taxes up till now, right? Like the carbon taxes, the carbon taxes taken in and then redistributed. And what has it accomplished? What has it accomplished? Is this Canada Supreme Court silences Jordan Peterson. The Supreme Court of Canada has dismissed Dr. Jordan Peterson's appeal against the Ontario College of Psychologists' mandate to undergo social, medical, or media re-education. The order was initially made due to Peterson's online posts deemed degrading and unprofessional, posting a, posing a risk to the public. Jordan Peterson says primarily and publicly opposing the butchers and liars subjecting children to sterilization and mutilation the court's decisions conclude his legal avenues in canada conclude his legal avenues in canada and requires him to pay the college's court costs peterson must now decide whether to comply with the reeducation program so and peterson's tweet says update regarding canadian or canada supreme court the court has rejected my appeal regarding the decision of the ontario college of psychologists subject to subject me to indefinite re-education primarily for publicity or primarily for publicly opposing the butchers and liars subjecting children to sterilization and mutilation i'm also required to pay whatever court costs the college accrued in relation to my appeal i'm now bereft of options on the legal front in canada i guess it's on with the show so they're going to railroad him and he's going to do it publicly to, sh to lay their game bare. And he's going to be damaged by this, lose his pra license to practice in Ontario and worse, financially damaged. Um, the Supreme Court of Canada is damaging its own credibility by not seeing this case and correcting the obvious injustice here. And, and so how, how do we play that out? What will we do when the public is confronted with undeniable evidence that all of these institutions have been overtaken and usurped by woke communists. What will we do? Will we shrug and allow it to continue? Because that's what we've done so far. Here's another example. Mario says it's well past time for the Minister of Justice in Alberta, Mikey Amory, to give special prosecutor Stephen Johnson a buzz. Two men are being held indefinitely, even though they have been acquitted of the serious charges that the courts were using to hold them for 907 days. Nothing about these proceedings have been normal. Liberal provincial prosecutors alongside Justin Trudeau appointed justices are influencing are using influence and position to persecute these men. So here's a minute long kind of rundown on what's going on. And uh, these guys sound exhausted. 
rightly so. And that's the point. Here we go. I'm with Marco Van Hugenboss. We just got the verdicts moments ago. What did you want to share about this time they spent in remand in relation to the most severe charge? 901 days today, Robert, for a charge uh, conspiring to kill RCMP officers that they have just been found not guilty of. Um, 901 days that these men have been away from their families, an aging widow for Tony Olenek, a mom and kids and son for and daughter for Chris Carbert. These men, their lives have been changed forever. Uh, yes, they've been found guilty of a few other charges. Mischief, possession of an explosive device, possession of weapons for the purpose of dangerous use, I believe is what, what, the, what the wording was. But 901 days held as innocent Canadians is a national shame for this country. It's appalling. It's disgusting, and this there needs to be change in the Canadian judiciary. Yeah, I'm. With there's, I mean, there's no way around it. What's, what's gone on is just unbelievable. And if justice can't even get the basics of common sense, uh, rule of law correct, I don't know how they're going to be able to address the ongoing invasion in Canada. Libs of TikTok highlights what's happening in London. London, 1706-24. So this is June 17th, 2024. And this woman's walking through London. So this is even before all of the current disorder. And here we go. I'll turn it down. I'm not sure how loud it'll be. Here we go. So it does not look like London. It looks like a Middle Eastern country. And that's weird. Maxime Bernier again is responding to himself or he's sharing uh, an old tweet that he um, published. And he says, when I, wrote in tw when, I, when I wrote in 2018 that extreme multiculturalism would destroy our social cohesion and potentially lead to violence, the whole political and media establishment said this was a ridiculous exaggeration that showed how racist and intolerant I was toward immigrants. In the meantime, the United Kingdom, France, Ireland, Germany, and the Netherlands, and other countries have experienced ethnic riots. Six years later, Canada's so social cohesion is also fast unraveling. We are importing conflicts from abroad and tribal violence is rising in our cities. Do you believe me now? This is from 2018. Cultural balkanization brings distrust, social conflict, and potential violence. As we are all, as we are seeing everywhere, it's time we reverse this trend before the situation gets worse. More diversity will not be our strength. It will destroy what has made us such a great country. Happening in real time, unfortunately. Kirk says, I need Danielle Smith or someone from her team to explain this to me because this isn't making sense. She says, let's have an aggressive target to double our population and the host is like what and she says yep let's take it to ten and a half million that's why i've said let's have an aggressive target to double our population i'm going to put this out there because i've, I've said that in the, the throne speech and i want people to understand how important that is we have to be that bastion of liberty and people are going to want to come here and we want to embrace them and we want to be able to build this place out so that we can actually have the political clout in alberta that we deserve because right now we're being treated as a junior partner by Ottawa. And if we end up with the strongest economy, we'll double our oil so you production. Wanna, and you we'll, want to go from four, uh, rough numbers, you probably know the number better than me. 4.7 million, roughly? We're almost at 5 million. We'll okay. 5 million so you want to double years. it to 10 million? Yep, I do. That's why I've said. What's your game, Danielle Smith? Is that Jason Kenny sitting in that chair? What the heck is going on? I want to double our population. Hello everyone, thanks very much for watching. This is just a short version of a longer show. If you'd like to get the whole show, you can go over to canadapoly.com and sign up for a subscription. Just look in the drop down tab for shop and donate and look for subscriptions and you'll get immediate access to the full show. Love to see you. Thanks for watching everybody. Have a wonderful, wonderful.